alcohol impaired driving remains the leading cause of death on the highways today. It counts for almost 30% of deaths, over 10,000 a year. And while the problem had been getting better since the 1980s, in the last few years we plateaued and now the numbers are actually beginning to go up. BAC, or blood alcohol concentration, is, uh, is a, a determined by a person's weight, their sex, how much they've, uh, they've drunk, and people have a very difficult time assessing their level of impairment. So most, most of the developed countries um, have enacted a BAC level of, uh, of 0.05, and they've been highly effective in reducing alcohol-related uh, fatalities. Two billion people are living countries that have uh, BAC levels of, of, uh, of 0.05. Five. The cost of alcohol-related uh, crashes is, is enormous. If you add up all of the different costs from the crash, the medical care, and all the consequences, in 2010 that cost was estimated at over $120 billion. So alcohol taxes in the, in, in the United States have, uh, have been very stagnant. In fact, since 1991 there's been no increase in federal taxes. Current taxes are roughly five cents per drink at the federal level, and then they're about five cents uh, on, on average uh, in, in most of the states for state taxes. So they're very low. And the committee believes that uh, uh, the taxes should be increased to a level that actually begins to discourage excessive drinking. There are some technologies out there that are highly effective, such as ignition interlocks. There are things that can be done at the uh, enforcement level. Um, in, such as sobriety checkpoints. And what we need is the people who have a stake in all of that, which is a very broad consortium of people, whether it's policymakers, victims, uh, the public, the uh, enforcement community, the healthcare community. So there is no acceptable level of alcohol-related fatalities on the road. We all have a stake in, all, in this and have a role to play in, uh, in reducing the problem.